Hey everyone, so if you follow my channel, you may have heard of Soundpeats and you may notice that they pump out new earbuds uh, quite regularly. So that's exactly the same case here with the True Engine line. And the great thing is they're always constantly improving on their previous models. But since they're releasing new models so often, it's kind of hard to keep up with the changes. So that's where I come in today to explain the differences between the True Engine line of earbuds and let you know if it's worth going for the older models, because in some cases it might be. Now the newest one in the True Engine line, the 3SE, is my current favorite, uh, basically all round budget earbud uh, with some of the best sound you can get and basically value for money at the price. There's really good stuff there. This isn't just for me, but for my lovely uh, viewers here as well. I've got a lot of great comments of people that have got it and they are, they're loving it too, which is great to hear. Now Soundpeats did contact me and they sent me out the True Engine 2 and the True Engine SE after watching my 3SE review, uh, which they liked and they wanted me to just basically compare all of them. That's all they said. So you're still getting my honest picky opinion. And I must say, thank you Soundpeats. One of my favorite budget brands uh, contacted me and they want me to do a, a comparison video. So it's pretty cool. But anyway, affiliate links are down in the description below. If you want to grab one of them, I'll grab them all. Go crazy. We're going over both pros and cons. This might be a bit of a long one today, but that's because we go in depth. So if you're picky with your audio, so am I, and I'm here to help. Let's get into another picky review. All right, before we start, so I don't have to say true engine a thousand times, I'm going to call the true engine SE, the SE. I'm going to call the true engine two, the true engine two, and the true engine three SE, just the three SE. So we've got SE, True Engine 2, 3SE. All right, on to physical features and design. And all the earbuds are rocking that pretty sick open driver design, which is really nice, I like it. And on the 3SE and the SE, you got kind of a grippy matte finish uh, all around the earbud, which gives it a nice grip, it's easy to handle, compared to the True Engine 2's kind of slippery hard plastics, which still feels quite premium. And the main difference being there on the True Engine 2, you have the interchangeable wingtips, of which you get three sizes included. This does make the True Engine 2 the largest out of the three, followed by the SE and then the 3SE coming in the most compact. And comparing the SE to the 3SE, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but you can definitely notice that they've shrunk it down quite a bit there. And you can kind of notice this when they're in the ears with the True Engine 2 sticking out the most, followed by the SE and the 3SE sitting pretty flush, uh, definitely more flush the other two here. The True Engine 2 has its touch surface right below that Soundpeats logo, kind of in the center uh, of the stem there, while the 3SE has it right on the logo. And the main difference here with the SE is that it actually has a physical button, which actually has some pros to it. I'll talk about that later in the video, so stay tuned for that. You've also got LED indicators on the actual logo for the True Engine 2 and the SE, uh, while on the 3SE, it's just a small indicator at the bottom of the earbud which I think looks a bit cleaner, but both are pretty good there. And for all earbuds, the indicators don't flash when music is playing. They only indicate when music is paused or if they're in pairing mode. So overall, my favorite here is at least the 3SE. It kind of comes down to personal preference. I think they look the best. I think they look pretty sleek with the indicator light and a nice kind of like bronze and gold hints on the driver and in the actual open design of the drivers as well. But design is one thing. What's more important is comfort and how they fit. So with all pairs, you get small, medium and large ear tips included. The only difference here is that on the 3SE, you get one pair of comply foam ear tips, uh, which can kind of squish and they mold in your ear a bit better, a bit more of a secure fit. It also changes the sound of the earbud very slightly, reducing the bass a little bit and then bringing out the mids and the highs. So it's kind of nice to have a little bit more customization there with the 3SE. Both the SE and the 3SE, due to that similar design, fit quite the same. The 3SE is probably just a little bit more comfortable just due to that more compact design. But for pretty much whatever you do, just general use, running, training, um, even if you're sweating and going for a run, the earbuds stay in fine basically all the time. And even when running, they don't really move around too much in the ear. They don't really bounce around, which is nice. The only time I lose a seal a little bit on both of them is like if I'm doing a hard set at the gym, I might be clenching my teeth, then I lose a seal in my right earbud. My right ear is always weird with earbuds that rarely fit perfectly. Um, and I lose the seal a little bit. There's definitely no way it's gonna fall out. But for me, it just means I might have to readjust the right earbud just a little more often than normal. But not really that bad, it's just nitpicking here. Now the biggest pro of the True Engine 2 is that you get way more of a secure fit, obviously due to that wing tip, but they also have a deeper fit. You can kind of tell when the ear tips are taken off here. They just go deep into the ear canal, which I find for me works really well with getting a really secure fit. And I would even go ahead, birds, not again. 
And I would even go ahead and say that these are currently my number one true wireless earbuds in terms of a secure fit. The reigning champions were the True Shift 2. They stay in really well. But the True Engine 2 here, I don't really get that weird suction feeling that I get with the True Shift 2, which is pretty nice. And it's pretty rare to get uh, a decent fit, at least for me, with uh, True Wireless earbuds. So, come on. So nice work, True Engine 2. So if you're looking for a really secure fitting earbud, the True Engine 2 are gonna be the clear winners. And it's pretty nice to just have a pair of earbuds in where you barely have to worry about adjusting them. You can just focus on whatever it is you're doing, running, training, and you can get in the zone with that stuff. Not to say the 3SE and the SE don't have a secure fit. They do fit really well, just not as secure as the True Engine 2. And you are gonna get more comfort with the 3SE and the SE. Um, I could wear them for a few hours before getting a little bit of discomfort. Um, whereas with the True Engine 2, for me, I find wingtips are fine, especially that specific design works pretty well for me, but I know a lot of people get a bit of discomfort with wingtips. So if you notice that for yourself, they might not be the go in terms of comfort. And again, this is gonna be different for everyone. I'm just letting you know my experience. Uh, everyone has different ear canals, shapes and sizes, so don't discriminate. So with the IPX rating, you get an IPX5 with the 3SE and the True Engine 2 and an IPX4 with the SE. So it's pretty much the same thing. You can use them in the rain. If you sweat a lot when you're training, they'll do the job. You just can't submerge either earbud in water. All right, now onto the case and battery life. And this is where things change around a little bit. You get 27 hours total with the SE with the earbuds in the case and 30 hours total on the True Engine 2 and the 3SE with the earbuds in the case. In my testing at 70% volume, all on the same playlist, I got nine hours and 20 minutes with the SE, really good. With the 3SE, I got eight hours and 30 minutes. And with the True Engine 2, I've got six hours and 10 minutes. Uh, and they've also seemed to have improved on how quick these can charge you. I'll put up all the charging times um, as you can see here. So you can see the SE and the 3SE, they've improved that a little bit. And a big difference is also gonna be on the True Engine 2. They do have wireless charging. So if that's a big thing for you, then you can just whack that on a wireless charger and don't have to worry about plugging them in. Uh, otherwise, the True Engine 2 use USB-C. Uh, so does the 3SE, the SE still has micro USB, but uh, they are an older pair, so keep that in mind. In terms of sizes of the case, 3SE and the SE are pretty much the same size. They kind of look, the SE looks like it's slimmer, but it's pretty much the same size. The True Engine 2 case is definitely a little bit on the larger side, uh, which is not really needed because like the battery life is kind of the same as the 3SE. Um, and the True Engine 2's case has that same hard plastic feel, whereas the 3SE and the SE have the grippy kind of matte feel there as well. And in terms of strength of the magnets, they're all pretty much the same here. Uh, they're pretty easy to take in and out. The cases are easy to open and close. The main difference is that with the True Engine 2 and the SE, when you open the case, you're indicated with the battery life of the case. Whereas on the 3SE, you need to take the earbuds in and out for the battery light indicator to come out. So kind of a step back there, but it's honestly not a huge deal. And overall, like when you take the earbuds out of the case within six seconds, They'll connect to your phone and start playing music on all pairs here. All right, onto touch controls and right off the bat, all earbuds control everything, play, pause, skip forward, back, volume up and down and voice assistant. The only main difference here, of course, is that the SE has a physical button, which you do have to press quite hard uh, to actually get to work. So you, you'll end up kind of pushing it into your canal. It's pretty uncomfortable, but an easy work around that is to kind of like rather than pushing it straight in, you kind of like push the earbud up the ear a little bit and then push it in and then it doesn't feel like uh, it's digging in as much. But one of the biggest pros of having a physical button is what I found in the gym because I'm not be training and someone comes to talk to me, I go talk to someone. I'm constantly taking my earbuds in and out of my ears. What's really nice about a physical button, you don't have to worry about accidentally activating touch controls when you just like grab the earbud, put it in your pocket or you're just holding it in your hand. It's a pretty, it's like, you wouldn't really think about it, but having a physical button there, take one earbud out, put it in the pocket, take it in, back out, back in the ear, and then you don't have to worry about changing the controls. Very small thing, but you actually might really like this if you know that you're constantly taking your earbuds in and out, talking to people or whatever it is you do. So keep that in mind. Now comparing the touch controls from the 3SE to the 2, you're basically getting better controls with the 3SE. They're, they're probably the best touch controls I've ever used. They're really responsive, they work pretty much 100% of the time. Whereas on the True Engine 2, they're just not as sensitive. Sometimes on like when I'm double tapping to play or pause, it won't respond every now and then. So it probably works like 90, 95% of the time. Uh, and look, look, life's too short for crappy touch controls. So 3SE wins here. Finally, on all pairs, you also get a nice subtle beep when you play pause or skip tracks forward and back, uh, which is nice to have. I, I like a bit of feedback. So uh, that wraps up touch controls. 3SE coming in in the win. If you want physical buttons, SE might be the go. And then True Engine 2, still decent, but a little bit behind from the 3SE there. All right, onto Bluetooth and connectivity. And it's pretty much the same across the board here. All pairs have the Qualcomm 3020 chip. 
which is pretty decent. You're getting SBC, AAC, and Aptex codecs, so the best codecs that are out there. And in terms of my Bluetooth range testing, they all got 90% on my outdoor test across 27 meters in a nice clear open space and 95% in my indoor test, 17 meters, downstairs, upstairs, through about five walls. So just a little bit above the competition there. In terms of latency, again, all the same here, barely any on YouTube and Netflix. And with gaming, they're not, they're not gonna be as good as a gaming pair of low latency earbuds, but they should do the job. And I think on Android, there's a low latency mode that you can activate, I'm not too sure, but I plan on getting an Android phone soon so I can test here, because I just test on an iPhone XS at the moment uh, for connectivity and all that kind of stuff there. So stay tuned for that, we're getting even pickier. And overall connection is relatively stable here, uh, it's good as true wireless earbuds can get, very few random disconnects. The only issue I found is like, if you're transferring one earbud to another device, they kind of randomly disconnect and then kind of connect again here and there. But honestly, really, really stable stuff overall for all pairs. All right, onto the microphone test and they all should do the job for basic phone calls. I'm not gonna win any microphone awards, but they'll pretty much uh, act the same across the board, but I'll whack up some tests here so you can hear for yourself. All right, so here's a microphone test with the Soundpeats True Engine SE. All right, so here's a microphone test with the Soundpeats True Engine 2. All right, here's a microphone test with the Soundpeats True Engine 3 SE. Now I'm gonna whack in some background noise playing off my computer speakers. Now I'm gonna whack in some background noise playing off my computer speakers. Now I'm gonna whack in some background noise playing off my computer speakers in three, two, one. All right, so now I have a crowd noise playing off my computer speakers. All right, so now I have a crowd noise playing in the background. All right, so now I have a crowd noise playing in the background to mimic what it would sound like to take a phone call in a noisy environment. To mimic what it would sound like to take a phone call in a noisy environment. To mimic what it would sound like to take a phone call in a noisy environment. All right, before we move on to my favorite part, sound quality, quick drop of my Instagram. I'll leave it down in the description below so you can follow some behind the scenes action of picky audio, my audio adventures and what I get up to in my life. So link is down in the description below. All right. Onto how these all sound. All right, as usual, starting with my bias, I listen to a lot of like rock, hard style, metal, EDM, side trance, uh, but I listen to everything, just letting you know what I like to listen to mainly uh, before I rate the sound of these. All right, as usual, starting with volume here. And right off the bat, the 3SE at 100% volume, just go a little bit louder than the other two pairs here. At 100% volume, I say you're right on the brink of territory for the 3SE. The True Engine 2 and the SE, you're also right on the brink. They're definitely loud enough, even if you're using them in a noisy environment, but it would be nice on the True Engine 2 and the SE to maybe just have one more notch to, to really crank it up. Uh, in terms of low listening though, this is where the True Engine 2 and the SE at the lowest volume are a little bit quieter. So you get a little bit more control overall there. Uh, with the 3 SE, I wouldn't say these are bedtime certified. They go quiet, but not quite enough. That's some low level listening. Now in terms of passive noise isolation, you're gonna get the best experience here on the True Engine 2 due to that deeper fit, but on the SE and the 3SE, still really good stuff. You're getting no white noise on any pairs and sound leakage is pretty much the exact same around here, pretty minimal. All right, onto the sound here and I'll just say it right off the bat. Overall, the best experience here is, at least for me, the 3SE. You're getting just the most finesse and quality overall, uh, but so we can go in depth, uh, we'll talk through it a bit more and we'll start with the low end. So. My favorite low end here, my favorite bass is the 3SE. I find you get just enough deep bass to give you that kind of resonating subwoofer feel. And it does so while still retaining a bit of punch to it and also without drowning out the other frequencies. Now the SE is very similar to the 3SE. Uh, I just find the 3SE, it's a little bit tighter, a little bit more refined than the SE. Now moving on to the True Engine 2, this is where you're getting a lot more of a boomy experience. And I would say if you're a bass head, the SE or the 3SE should do the job. If you've got a huge bass head, then the True Engine 2, you actually might prefer. You're getting a lot more boom, it's just more bass overall. And this does work better with some genres. With the True Engine 2's bass though, again, at least for me, I find that it gets to the point on some tracks where it's just a little bit too much. It does work really well with like hip hop and like more electronic dance music tracks. Uh, since there's a little bit more emphasis on the kind of the upper low end, which gives it a bit of more of that boomy, kind of just bigger feel, uh, which you might prefer when it comes to hip hop and for hard style, we'll go to the genre rating checklist in a second. Uh, but I find that on, on some instrumentation tracks like acoustic guitars, or even like with distorted guitars in metal, it does drown out the other frequencies 
just a little bit. Now onto the mid-range, and again, the 3SE comes out in top here with a nice direct mid-range. Vocals come forward really well. You get nice impact on your instrumentation. And the True Engine 2 just falling a little bit behind here, probably because the low end is so emphasized, but a really good mid-range on the True Engine 2. And the SE is still good, it's just uh, comes in third place here uh, in terms of your mids. Now with the treble, things get a little bit spicy here. The brightest sound is gonna come from the SE, but I find that at high volumes, it can get harsh on some tracks. Uh, not super harsh, but overall the experience here when we compare it to the 3SE and the 2, uh, it just sounds like a little bit empty and a little bit tinny compared to the 3SE and the 2. Out of the 3SE and the 2 though, again, the 3SE comes forward just a little bit. You get a little bit more of a crisp, direct sound in that, in that high end, so hi-hats, crash cymbals, to sound a bit more natural, a bit more forward, but the two is just slightly behind. And this is probably, again, because of that quite heavy bass. And the fact that you're getting so much bass, the True Engine 2 still pushes that high end forward really well, it does a really good job. And it's, it's kind of impressive to, uh, to see how they've done that here with the True Engine 2. Now, in terms of soundstage, imagine like a giant sphere around your head. It's like how big the sound is. 3SE coming out in top, followed by the SE and then the True Engine 2 it's coming in third place there. But like you're getting a really good experience and definitely above average for the price you're paying here when we compare it to the competition. So it's very subtle differences here in terms of sound stage. And as well with sound imaging, like picking out where instruments are coming from, you're getting the best experience with the 3SE, followed by the SE again, and then the True Engine 2 coming in third. But again, still really good overall. It's just with the True Engine 2, that boomy bass makes it a little bit harder to pick out instruments. But again, really good. It's kind of only when, when you kind of compare the three, you do notice the differences. It, on their own, they're all individually really good. So the best overall e here are the three SE, for me at least. Uh, but look, either way you go, you're gonna get a really good experience. And this is where burning comes into play, like not actual driver burning, which is kind of rare with earbuds, but more like psychological burning. Basically your brain adapting to a certain type of sound. So even though the SE has a more bright, harsh sound, over time, you can probably get used to that if you use just those earbuds. Same with the boomy bass on the True Engine 2. Use those for a while. Humans were pretty adaptive creatures. You'll probably find that that bass, you wouldn't really notice it as much basically until you go to another pair that has less bass and you're like, oh, these had more bass than I remember. Bit of a tangent there, but something to remember when going for these earphones. Basically, they all sound really good for the price you're paying. But anyway, so I can explain further, we're gonna go into the classic genre rating checklist. And like with all versus videos, I'm basically gonna let you know which one I prefer with each individual genre here, rather than rating on a scale of one to 10. And as usual, we're starting with EDM. And the 3SE coming in first here, followed by the True Engine 2, and then the SE coming in third. Basically the 3SE overall has a nice, punchy, big sound. Vocals and synths come through really well. True Engine 2 just behind, because you get that nice boom, so a little bit more of a big live sound. And then vocals still come through really well in all those synths. And the SE just falling slightly behind. Still really good, but 3SE and True Engine 2 is a little bit better. With Pop and Radio, 3SE is gonna come in first, and the True Engine 2 and the SE tying second. So obviously main focus being vocals here with your Pop and your Radio, uh, doing the best job in the 3SE, and the SE and the True Engine 2, again, just falling slightly behind there. Now with Hip Hop and r and I'm gonna give a tie to the 3SE and the True Engine 2, just cause it kind of comes down to personal preference, whether you don't mind that kind of more boomy sound on the True Engine 2, and then all the percussion vocals still come through really well, or if you want a bit more of a punchy sound um, with vocals coming through a little bit more and percussion having a bit more impact on the 3SE. And again, SE is still sounding really good, just falling slightly behind. All right, onto my favorite genre, metal. 3SE coming in first place here once again. Again, you're just getting really nice clarity and you're still getting that nice heavy sound and you're able to pick out everything in the chaos that is metal. Now with the True Engine 2 and the SE, I'm gonna tie them in second place. Again, kind of depends what you want. You're getting that brighter sound with the SE, not as much boom. And the mid-range is held back a bit more on the SE. On the True Engine 2, the mid-range is a little bit further forward, so distorted guitars sound really good, but they can get a little bit overemphasized sometimes due to the, the low end there on the True Engine 2. Now with Rock uh, 3SE, again, coming in first place, followed shortly by the True Engine 2, you're gonna get a little bit of a big live sound, uh, but again, not too, um, not too much clarity there when compared to the 3SE. And again, SE coming in third place there, all sounding really good, just falling shortly behind again. Now with Indian Acoustic, again, 3SE coming in first, you're getting nice precision, everything sounds really natural uh, when it comes to acoustic tracks. I'll give the SE second place here because that brighter sound works pretty well with the acoustic stuff. 
And again, the True Engine 2 coming in third place, still sounding very good, but on some tracks with the acoustic guitar, at least in the low end, it's a little bit overemphasized and it can kind of drown out the mix a bit there. There. <clears throat> the mix a bit there. Moving on. Jazz, similar boat to acoustic here. 3SE coming first, followed by the SE, followed by the 2. The only issue with the True Engine 2 there is, again, that low end with all those bass lines can, again, just kind of muddy, mud in the sound a little bit, muddy up the sound, we'll say muddy up the sound a little bit there. And with Classical, again, 3SE, taking first place, followed shortly by SE and the 2, just tied second. Again, it really depends on what you're kind of going for. You're gonna get more low end with the True Engine 2, but the SE is gonna bring out all that orchestration just a little bit better. So it's personal preference. Again, everything's sounding really good. All right, onto subgenres here, more niche stuff, but if you listen to these types of music, hopefully it can help you out. And as usual, starting with another one of my favorite genres, hard style. And I'm gonna give the True Engine 2 and the 3SE a tied first place here, basically because both sound really great. With the True Engine 2, again, you're getting more of a boomy sound. It sounds a little bit bigger, whereas you're getting a little bit more punch on the 3SE. With Hardstyle, both sound really good. It really depends on what you prefer. Uh, both are great. SE just falling shortly behind. I mean, still sounds good, but compared to the other two here, it sounds a little bit flat compared. With Trap and Dubstep, 3SE, again, all around, just getting the best experience. And then I'll give the True Engine 2 and the SE a tied second place here. Now with Psytrance, 3SE first. Uh, SE coming in second because you get that more punchy sound that works a little bit better with Psytrance. True Engine 2 coming in third just because that boomy sound can kind of drown out the other frequencies or the synths and what gives uh, Psytrance that kind of psychedelic feel. But again, everything's still sounding really good on all three. So it's hard to choose who wins because it's, it's all very close. Now with techno, and I'm talking more heavy techno here, 3SE and True Engine 2 coming in tied first. The, you know what? I want to, True Engine 2 is going to, we need someone else to win. The True Engine 2 is going to get first here, uh, just because I find with heavy techno, that that big boomy sound, it kind of feels like you're at a live techno event. It's really nice on the True Engine 2. So 3SE coming in second, and then third place SE, again, still really good, because percussion comes through really well with that bright sound. It's basically a battle of like that big heavy bass and percussion with techno, specifically heavy techno. It'll sound really good, but True Engine 2 wins there. Onto Symphonic Metal, 3SE coming in first place. Just a really nice experience. Orchestration comes through really well with the great sound stage and sound imaging, and it still sounds quite heavy with those distorted guitars. SE coming in second here, and the True Engine 2 coming in third. Kind of similar to metal here. Sometimes the True Engine 2, it can kind of drown out uh, the other frequencies just a little bit there with that heavy sound. Again, all really good. And we'll just finish off with Does It To Gent. They all do, so 3SE first and we'll go kind of similar to metal, uh, SE, and, and kind of tied second there with the True Engine 2. All sounding really good, depends if you want that even heavier sound with the True Engine 2, but it does drown out the other frequencies just a little bit. All right, that was a bit of a tricky one today, but hopefully that can help you out in deciding which pair to go for. Again, they all sound really good on their own. Uh, it's only when you start to compare the pairs, you notice a difference. The biggest difference here is basically the True Engine 2, as you can probably tell, having more of that boomy and just overall more bass. Uh, which I feel like works quite well since they do have more of that secure fit. So when you're training, and I've used these on a few occasions in the gym, that extra bass, especially when you listen to your dance tracks, hardstyle and like trap dubstep, anything with a nice boomy bass, it definitely gets you pumping through as well, which is pretty nice. And if you don't mind drowning out some instrumentation, more instrumental tracks, um, then they could be a really good go. They also do have wireless charging going for them, so it makes them a pretty good go, even though they are a little bit of an older model. But this isn't to say that the SE and the True Engine 3 SE still didn't have a really secure fit. I still use both in the gym. They stayed in fine. You just might have to readjust them just a little bit more. And you do get a little bit more comfort, so if you're using them for longer periods of time uh, compared to the True Engine 2's ear fin, they may be a little bit more comfortable for you. But look, I would still, if I was only recommend one, I would say go for the 3 SE because uh, you're getting overall better experience, you're getting better sound quality, the most compact design, um, the actual design looks pretty cool as well. I think they've bumped it up quite a bit and you're getting some really, really solid touch controls. But you might actually prefer the physical button on the SE in, in that rare case if you don't uh, like touch controls and you can still work around even though you have to push it into your ear quite a bit. You can just kind of push it up and play around with it a little bit there and it's not too bad. Any pair here could be a pretty good option and if the True Engine 2 and the SE since they are older models, if they're gonna be on sale, then yeah, they could definitely still be uh, a good go if you wanna get something a little bit cheaper. All right, that wraps it up for today. It's been a long one, but thanks for tuning in. If you like the video, be sure to like it. Chuck a comment down below. I reply to all comments, so don't be shy. Any earbud requests you have, any questions. Uh, the more you request earbuds, I've pretty much got a gigantic list of earbuds I'm trying to get my hands on. 
the, the higher chance I will get those earbuds. So please subscribe, hit the bell button to stay updated. I've got videos coming out weekly. Been on a bit of a sound peach spree lately, but we've got plenty of new uh, earbuds to come out soon. So in the meantime, stay tuned. And of course, stay picky with your audio because life's too short for crappy sound. See you in the next video. Bye now.